When creating a form intended to be used as a fillable PDF, we usually start in a program like Microsoft Word and do the layout there. It's usually easier because we can create more of the structure, the checkboxes for the items over here, for example, in question one, the radio buttons, question two, as well as the set that we'll have down here in question three. The spaces for email and other comments we can do a little more easily when we go directly into Acrobat, but some of the more complicated bits are easier to do outside. Having created the form, we can then save it and close it, exit out of Word if we wish, usually the safest thing to do, and then once we're in Adobe Acrobat, we can go to the File menu and slide down to Create and tell the program we want to do a PDF from file. And then, as you might guess, we simply have to navigate to wherever the file is located, give it a double click, and allow Acrobat to do its thing. This normally takes at least a few seconds, but once the file opens as a PDF in Acrobat, we still have a little more to do. Having brought in the file, we still have to tell Acrobat to essentially look at it and quote-unquote guess where the checkboxes, radio buttons, etc. would go. Luckily this is not hard. We simply have to get the right tools and over here I can click on more tools to bring up the necessary piece of it, scroll through my list of toolboxes and find the one called prepare form. We can add it to our main list if we wish but one way or the other once we bring it in this is where we have to go next. We can tell the program whether the document requires signatures, but more importantly, we have to make sure that this one feature called Form Field Auto Detection is on. If it happened not to be, I could click on Change here, which would jump me directly into the program preferences, specifically the Forms category, and the critical checkbox is sitting right here, Automatically Detect Form Fields. It's literally a form of pattern recognition, and once that's on and we OK out of the box, we can simply click Start, and the program will then look around, find the various boxes, etc. It will tell us that the changes we made need to be saved. That's not a problem. We can hit Save here, and then we can add whatever we want to the name. Uh, call it something like Feedback Form Test. Click on Save. And after a few more seconds, we see that the program did mostly guess right. We note that here for question number one, we have the checkboxes for men's clothing, women's clothing, children's clothing. The tooltips might need to be changed to match the captions, but that's not hard to do. We see that for question two, the radio buttons came up correctly. However, it turns out that Acrobat sometimes looks at more than four choices on a form for these type of radio buttons and doesn't quite guess right that the fifth one needs to work with the other four. We'll fix that in a moment. Most of the kinds of fixes that we would need to do involve right-clicking on, for example, the check mark for women's clothing and sliding up to Properties, clicking on that in the pop-up menu. We can then change the name as well as the tooltip for the item in question. And if we want, we can go to Appearance and tell the program that we want, at the very least, a border color, if not a fill color, for the buttons in question. It's good practice to include a border color, uh, usually black or some other dark color, so that if, by chance, the form does not have things clearly marked, or as clearly as we'd like, the uh, border color will mark off the edges. We go to the options and we can see that the checkbox style can be changed as well. You can literally have it do a check, or a square, or a cross, whatever's good for you. And when we're finished fiddling with the options here, we click close. Same sort of thing with the radio buttons. We can right click whichever one, again, go to properties, 
we can see that under general the name and tooltip match with the question. Again, appearance, a good idea to add border color. Options, the button style being a circle is fine. Radio button choice being yes makes perfect sense. The program saw what we were trying to do there. Same thing with the no. We can right click, go to properties, double check that the button style is indeed circle, but the but radio button choice is no. Appearance, again, border color, not always necessary, but if you're not sure, better to include it than not. And then close, of course. Going down to question three, though, we see that for the first four buttons under professionalism match, but the fifth one does not. The easiest way to fix the problem is simply to delete the incorrect tool, click on it, hit the delete key on the keyboard, and then add yet another radio button. We can just click the control there, slide down and drag to add the button at the appropriate size. One might want to zoom in to do this better. And then for the radio button choice, the numbers, one through four, have already been added to the others, so we'll just change the choice to five. But then for the group name, we need to select in the drop-down the choice called professionalism, which, as you might gather, will match the others. And then to make sure that all the properties are copacetic, we can click the All Properties here, do our usual, check under General, Name and Tooltip, Appearance, Border Color, as already mentioned. We don't have to worry about position. But the options, we might want to change the button style, again, to match the others. Probably square would be best. Radio button choice is already dealt with. And then we can click Close once more. If at whatever point we want to make sure things are proceeding the way we like, we can go up and click the preview button here and take a look at how things are set up so far. We can hover on whichever checkbox or button, see that the tooltip is doing what it's supposed to, check or uncheck whichever of these. As you can see, I told it I wanted a check mark rather than a square. With the radio buttons here for question number two, I can click either yes or no, but not both which is exactly the way such a thing is supposed to work. And for question number three, the professionalism choice, I can select one of the above or one of these, but not all. And I may need, again, to change the exact style of the buttons, but they are now working as a team, which is what we intended. Going further down, I need to switch back to edit mode because I need to add the text boxes for the fourth and fifth items. I need text fields. So what I'll do here for the email address is click text field, go down here and click, change the field name, whatever we think is appropriate is fine, but I also want to make it wider. So I can grab this dot here, one of the sizing handles, drag out to the right a bit, allow for longer email addresses when necessary. And if I need to go in and fiddle with the properties, I can right click Again, go to Properties and add a tooltip. I could even have it say something like, please write email address here. Go to the Appearance. It is very important with some of these text fields to add a border color because in many cases they won't show up at all until you tab to them. Uh, options, again, same sort of thing. We might even want to set a default value in there. Checking spelling, that's debatable. Multiline we'll use in the other field we're going to create, though. So I'll close this for the moment. Again, text field. This time I can go down to the fifth question and drag to make the box a little bigger, because, of course, with the uh, field for comments, we'll want to go ahead and add uh, enough space for a few lines worth. We can put in field name of comments click on the properties directly. Under general, again, tooltip could say something like, please add comments here. Go to appearance, again, border color is a good idea, just in case. Options, as I mentioned a moment ago, multi-line 
would be helpful because we want people to be able to write at least a few lines of comment, good, bad, or other. Once we've got that, we might even want to have a limit on the number of characters. Many kinds of comment fields have that. Uh, something like three or four hundred, maybe five or six at the most would be good. So 500 characters. Click on close. Again, click a blank spot. We're almost done with the layout. We can even select the two text fields. Click the one, shift click the other. Right click on whichever one, and we can even align them on the left edges, let's say. Right click again, whichever one. Set the fields to the same size in terms of width would look a little bit more visually appropriate. And again, we can preview and see that things will look pretty much the way we would hope them to. There is one last point we need to make about creating a fully workable form, and that is we can't just save at this point. We have to tell the program about something more. We go to the File menu. We slide down to Save as Other. And then, coming off there, Reader Extended PDF. And finally, on the third menu here, Enable More Tools includes Form Fill In and Save, which gives us the hint. When we click this command, we get the message about enabling usage rights, save form data for a fillable PDF form, commenting and drawing, etc. We click Save Now, and we can go ahead and change the name yet again if we wish. The key point is that even though the Save As type is still Acrobat PDF, we are allowing interaction with the form fields, check marks, radio buttons, text fields, etc. We can save. No obvious changes happen here. We can even close this form in Acrobat Pro and test it in Adobe Reader. We can go to File to Open within Acrobat Reader, navigate as needed, and here's our feedback form final. Open that up, and we can see that if we click the check marks, they should activate or not. We can choose between the yes and no for question two. We can click on the radio buttons here, even though they're square, for professionalism. And if we wanted to enter an email address or comments, we're ready to go. All we would have to do now is the equivalent of tear off as many copies as necessary, send them out via email, etc. And we now have a fully workable, interactive, fillable, PDF form.